Hello again. I thought I'd do uh, a little clip on uh, on tyres on your caravan. Um, it quite surprises me sometimes when I'm driving down the road and I see caravans and cars, and you can clearly see that the tyres are not in that good condition, that they may not be the right pressure, and sometimes they can be dangerous. So what I'm going to do is just go through a few things that I found out while I've been caravanning. Uh, that are quite useful for the tyres that people may or may not know but it's just things that I've, I've been pointed out to me that I find quite interesting. So caravan tyres, uh, the recommendation is that they uh, should be changed after five years and certainly after seven years. Uh, I'm going to go through the markings on the tyre shortly but when you buy a new caravan I have seen and read um, people in magazines and that saying that they've bought the caravan and the tyres are possibly 12 months old. The caravan manufacturers buy their tyres in bulk and they could possibly have had those for a few years before they go on the caravan. When you buy a used caravan you've no idea how long those tyres have been on the van. Uh, they may be date stamp but you don't know at what point they've been put on. So I would recommend possibly changing them as soon as you buy the caravan. Then you've got an idea of how the tyres the have been stored and used. If you look in caravan magazines, they say that the average caravan does around about 2,000 miles a year, which is not a great deal of mileage. But the tyres do wear and you've got to change them after maximum seven years. But why do you need to change them? Well, obviously you've got quite a bit of weight sat on them and sometimes they sat still for quite a lot of time, which puts pressure on the tyres. So when you set up on site, the tyre on the off side gets a lot of the sun if you've got an awning on. Obviously the near side tyre doesn't get that much sun on it. Uh, and also tyres um, can be affected by oil and grease and dirt on the road. So it's important to make sure that you, you do check your tyres quite regularly. So I'm going to go through some of the things that I do with my tyres. Uh, I obviously have a few few gadgets that I use. Uh, and this is the tyre presser gauge, the old style where the, the gauge comes out at the end. And then uh, you just put that onto the valve and it gives you the reading. I use that sometimes. I also use a um, an electronic one. It's like a you just press it and it gives a reading you can put that in psi bar and you put that on and it gives a reading um, and also uh, i think it's quite important to check the depth of the tires i use a depth gauge the actual minimum depth is 1.6 mil across the center three quarters of the tire i also use a tire pal monitoring system i did see it myself on a video and i found it quite a useful uh, thing to have um, if you look at cars i think from 2000 i think it's from 2014 onwards every car is fitted with a tyre monitor um, so why don't we do it for caravans I think it should be a fairly standard thing I know a lot of caravan manufacturers have started to fit them as standard um, but I do think for the older vans you should you should really you know monitor your tyres and I find that the tyre pal works really well so this is my tyre pal system that I use um, I was actually looking for it at the caravan but it's actually at home so I've come home to do this video I'm not going to give you a demonstration on how it works or how to set it up because there's loads of them on the internet but what I'm going to just do is show you how it works for me um, inside the box uh, you get a mount for the main unit which goes on the dashboard of your car um, I thought that um, you'd have to leave this plugged in uh, while you're driving so I, I was thinking about another auxiliary uh, cigarette lighter point but you don't you can charge this up and uh, it stays charged for a very long time we set off last year driving down to France uh, we drove about seven hours to down to Poole and then uh, about two and a half hours on the other side uh, getting to our destination and it didn't need charging once uh, I did put it on charge on the way back um, but it was only on charge for I don't know maybe half an hour or so and then uh, it was fully charged so that's something that you can just put anywhere on the dashboard I put it on the passenger side facing towards me then it's just out of the way uh, and it monitors uh, you know the tyres obviously you get the actual fittings that go onto the tyre uh, with this particular kit you get two of them uh, I got this one through the Caravan Club, they were doing a discount on it on one of their deals and it was, uh, I think it was about £110. Now on there you can see I've put one of the stickers on, I've put an 8 on one of the uh, the sensors. Um, and I did that because um, when I first put it on, I, I, had, I take them off. Um, 
because they're quite expensive these they're about 50 pounds each or something like that and I take them off um, but when I went to put them back on what you do is you register them to to the main unit and I'd realized that uh, I'd registered them to the main unit and I'd put them on a different wheel because the temperatures uh, sorry the pressures were slightly different so what I did is I put a just a little sticker on that that's obviously a number eight uh, and I put that on the near side tire so I always know that the one with the sticker goes on the near side tire uh, you get sleeves to protect uh, that slide over the top of the the sensors and a, a locking nut that goes on there as well um, which makes it secure the actual unit now I've not used it for a while so I will switch it on see if it actually works so it's on now um, and obviously, obviously there's because it's not been on for a while and it's almost fully charged as you can see I've not used that since last November and there's just two flashing there which are the two sensors that I've got what you can do with this you can set your parameters in terms of you can set your your lower limit for your pressure so I have mine set uh, the normally the normal temperature uh, pressure is 51 psi and I have mine set at 48 psi so if it goes below 48 psi it's going to tell me which one is going below there and you can also you can also set the ceiling limit as well so in terms of um, the higher pressure the the max load for, for my tires is 65 psi so I set that I don't set it at 65 psi because obviously that's the maximum you can go to I've actually set it at about I think I've set it at 68 psi um, the change in in the uh, the pressures is, is um, when we were going down to France I noticed it was quite warm at the time and they did go up to about 63 psi but it, obviously it's not hit the maximum so it was fine it also measures it monitors the temperature of the tires which is quite good so you can see what temperature they're running at um, if there's any alarms go off, uh, off it means there's a you know a problem with with the tire it is a really good system it's worthwhile putting on to monitor your tires um, I think you do get a little bit of a uh, an insurance discount if you mention that you've got tire pal on, on your vehicle but um, yeah it's well worth having just to make sure you've got a peace of mind when you're towing on long distances or anywhere really another system that you can use on your tires is the tire on bands uh, i've looked into these uh they're a really good system whereby it keeps the tire on the wheel rim uh, enable you to to move the vehicle and if you get a you know a puncture in the middle of the motorway you're able to move it and get it off the off to the side of the road there is one issue with a tire on bands and i did read uh, a few people mentioning this that if you go over to europe and you have a puncture there is a special allen key uh, for taking the bands off and I have heard um, frightening stories of, of people having punctures, taking them to tyre fitters in France maybe, and them not having the right equipment. And what ha what's happening is they're actually damaging the wheel rim, trying to get the tyre off. Um, so I, I think they do come with a special key. So it's advisable that if you do go abroad that you take that with you because uh, some of the, um, the garages over there don't have the facility for taking them off. Another way to preserve your tyres is uh, like what I do every winter and that is put my caravan up on axle stand. It just takes the pressure off the tyres. Uh, I also rotate the tyres round, make sure the wheels can turn freely uh, in order for me to, you know, so they're not just sat on one position all the time, but if they are slightly just off, off the ground on the axle stands, which does help with the tyres and it stops that pressure being put on that one place on the tyre. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go outside and we're just going to look at some of the markings on the tyre and we're going to look at uh, some of the things that I check on my tyre when I, before I go out on my journey. So I'm just going to point out some of the, the markings on the tyre. I'm not going to point them all out because some of them uh, are not relevant. So obviously you've got the, the size of the tyre. These are 185 uh, 14s. It's marked again there. It says radial 185 14 a tubeless tyre just with that tubeless you can't put tyre on bands on uh, tyres with tubes in them but um, obviously I don't think there's many caravans without with tubes in these are all season tyres you do get different ones winter and summer tyres 
and that's the uh, maximum PSI which is 65 one of the important ones that I talked about is the actual date stamp I don't you can see we can get into that there that's how it's positioned and it says 4212 that means that the tire was made in the 42nd week of 2012 now working that out you can obviously tell that my tires are just over five years old so they do need to be changed probably within the next year but with the axle stands on the vehicle that are lifted off they are quite uh, decent the tire walls are quite good as well there's no marks or scratches on the tire wall so I've just brought this table up to talk about the maximum load and the speed rating symbol the mine and 102 are so if we look at the table 102 is 850 kilograms per single wheel now the MTPLM of my caravan is 1300 kilograms so these two wheels combined can carry up to 1700 kilograms the speed rating is classed as R which is 106 miles an hour which is 170 kilometers per hour so to check the depth of the tyre you get the tyre depth gauge just push it into the tyre push the, in, the centre piece in and then pull that away and that will give you the depth of the tyre mine are about 6mm at the moment so there's plenty on them you also need to check as well inside the tyre there you can see this well, this piece here I don't know if you can see it is actually higher than the um, the the depth the bottom of the tyre and that's the tyre depth wear indicator when the tyres get down to that level there that's when you need to be thinking about changing your tyres I also do a visual check of the inside of the wall of the tyre and the outside of the wall of the tyre to make sure there's no bulging or no eggs on the tyre also when I'm checking the tyre I don't rub my hand over the surface of the tyre because if there is a nail in there it's going to stick in your hand and cut your hand open so you need to be careful of that tyre pressures obviously this is a uh, everybody knows how to do this but I'm going to check them while I'm here because it's been stuff for quite a while so I just put the gauge on and that's actually reading quite low and you can see that it's reading at 46.5 the tyre pressures on these are 51 I'm just going to check that again and that's 46 I do like to check them several times I use this electric one and I do use the manual one just to make sure that they're the right pressures one of the other jobs I do almost every time we go out in the van is I check the tension on the wheel nuts and I'd use a, a torque wrench um, which I bought from Amazon the torque wrench I bought was a, it's a um, silver line uh, calibrated one and these particular wheel nuts are torqued to 115 newton minuses so I don't know if you can see that on there basically is you slacken this nut off at the top so I want 100 so if I turn that round I look for the the nearest one and this one it's got 112 there don't you can see that so I'm going to tighten that up to 112 so I need 115 so you tighten it up to 112 with the zero I don't you can see that there which is in line with it so I need 115 so I'll tighten it up three more that gives me 115 so once I've set the torque wrench up I just put on the wheel nuts and it clicks when it's at the right pressure you put the wheel nut on and you'll hear it click it's also important once you've used it to actually take the pressure off the torque wrench because it does mess up the calibration so we just loosen it off and just tighten it up a little bit so it's nice and slack so that's just a little insight of what I do with my tyres to make sure that they roll legal and safe when I tow the caravan as I say I do have the tyre pile uh, system as well which I'll, I'll probably link onto this video